today's video I'm gonna do the metallics so this is how I do my metallics uh, we're using this Titan uh, Gatling blaster um, yeah this is what we'll be using so this we've already done this so this is the base coat that you see there the uh, metallic base coat which is uh, yeah that one gunmetal by Vallejo Game Air um, we're going to then use MIG metal slag uh, which is a pigment we're going to mix that pigment with Spectrafix fixative uh, for um, for the the pigment so this is just from the art store uh, you can see that the ingredient is denatured grain alcohol so isopropyl alcohol it's um that's what that's what causes it to bond yeah works really well let's uh let's cut to it so what i've done is i mix everything in just a cheap tupperware container so let me show you what we do pretty straightforward this has a little spray nozzle pump pack thing on it just spraying a bit of that in there just a bit no, not much you're not you don't need heaps i use this is an old um an old makeup brush um and i've just cut the end off because I, I think it's for this it's better anyway you just get a bit of that chuck a bit of him in there mix it up like that so you barely you barely need any uh, and then all we do we get our guy like this you can, the, uh, you can see the the green there is not finished yet so just ignore that uh, and then we just use this as like a wash um, and this is a it's a completely matte wash basically um, that's got a hint of color to it so it's got like a like a brownie sort of color to it like you would get on old metal so if you yeah if you yeah if you look at old metal it's or metal that's been outside or metal that's had a hard life um, that's the sort of look that I'm going for with this uh, and you can be quite rough with it because what we're going to do in the next step once all this dries a bit um, is we're going to rub some of it off revealing the um, the cleaner metal color underneath there and it'll give us that brown it's not rust because it's it's that's what that's the sort of where it'll come at come to at the end of once it's dry that's what it'll look like so we just go around and get it all in here I'll also show you um, probably not on this probably not on this weapon but I'll, do, I'll be doing a video on um, how I get the the yeah the bronze sort of colored metallics um, that I uh, yeah that I how I do that which is that's quite an enjoyable process so yeah for this stage that those those things are uh, what we'll need to get this wash done so you see there's a bit of you can see now you're looking at it there's a bit of brown to it um, yeah. obviously this uh, this green needs a couple more coats um, I haven't really decided what I'm doing with that yet though so that's why it's looking like it is Again, it's not so important. Uh, brush strokes, we're not too worried about at the moment. Um, we can sort all of that out later. But yeah, it's just, it's very quick. This is a very quick step. All 
All right, I'm going to go through and do the rest of it, and uh, we'll come back when it's um, dry and we're ready for the next um, next little bit. All right, next stages. This is dried for about half an hour, 40 minutes. We're going to use some of this, and we're going to use some of this, which is just a steel acrylic paint for the um, for the weathering and the scratches. So. You can see we've got our pigment wash on there. It's a bit rough at the moment. Uh, I get a little bit of water on my finger, chuck a bit of it on the um, paper, bit of paper towel, and just give it a quick rub down. Just, and all you're doing here is creating a bit of, um, you know, like a wear area or just an area where you, you know, it just creates a bit of interest, a bit of um, variation in the, in the look of it. So we then get that. So you can see that's, uh, yeah. We use an old makeup brush, just a cheap one from the, um, you know, from the supermarket. I've cut the end off it because I think it's better for this. It gives it a bit, makes it a bit stiffer. And then starting a bit where you're you know, we, you're probably not going to see it that well. So this is the, in, on my Titan, this is the inside of the arm. So you're not really going to, yeah, you're not really going to see this. So I'm like, I'll start here. And this gives quite a realistic finish. Like it's, um, it leaves some of the yellow in it. It leaves some of the um, undercoat in it of the, uh, the gunmetal grey. Um, we just go around and we just, obviously we want to leave the stuff that we put into the recesses in there. But we're really just picking up the areas here that'll wear. And you can see, you can see these scratches. These are in, these are in the resin. Um, when I painted it, I noticed them, but I actually quite like these. These actually were in, in the mold. So... But, and I thought, oh, I'll sand them off. And I sanded them off on a lot of parts. But this is, I assume this is an ammo hopper. Um, I'm almost 100% sure it is an ammo hopper. Um, and I I really like these little scratches. Like it's been lifted up with a, um, you know, with a, a heavy lifter or something has lifted these things up. So what it's actually led me to do over the other side as well um, but on, on this side and over the other side, I'm going to use these, um, these are just transfers from a, um, a model kit from a, I think they're from the M113 that I used to, to make true scale, um, rhinos, more on that later. And I'm going to use these little lift here thingies and I'll put, I'll put those transfers like here and here on both sides. And I think that'll, um, that'll be quite cool. Anyway, uh, yeah, so let's go get back to this, sorry. A uh, little bit more on the brush, and you can see I'm going to do this section at the back here of the gun. Now I'm just going to I'm going to use it like you would do a non-metallic metal, um, where I'll just pick a band and do it like that, and it it just I just think that it it works really nicely doing it like this. And this this sort of this look that I'm getting here. I think looks a lot more um, realistic than the the standard sort of GW um, method of lead belcher, null oil highlights. Um, I think this this the texture that you get is a lot more um, a lot more realistic. I think the colours it looks really um, quite. When you see it in person and not under a light or through a camera lens, um, it does look very, very um, real. It really does look like a metal to me. Anyway, I, I found I've had a lot of people asking me how I do this, so I, I assume that other people think it looks quite realistic too. Um, yeah. So there we go. We're looking quite metallic there now. Let's get a little bit more on there. So these bits here, these bands, these will be uh, these will be a different colour. They'll be a golden uh, or a bronzy type um, appearance. So let's do that breach there. 
blow some of the extra. Next little trick is we're going to just create a bit of um, more realistic sort of weathering, I guess you'd call it, would you call it? Just uh, creating some interest with these barrels. So this has been where these recesses are. This has had a bit of the metal slag pigment wash. Uh, this is just the, the base coat still. Um, and then metal slag pigment wash. And then what all I'm doing here is I'm just going like this and I'm fading it in at the ends to just give that um, illusion that this, this metal here is discolored and that the uh, it, it's just creating areas of shadow on it and it's they uh, they're more um it's more realistic than if you use a wash because it's actually you're rubbing into it you're not uh washing onto it um or washing into the recesses and getting all those water lines and things and i find that i've got a lot more control doing it this way and also you're not losing that color underneath so that gunmetal color is still there and you're sort of rubbing away any of the wash uh, and, and bringing that out again, which is what, that's uh, the way I said is where metal wears like that, it'll get dirty in the recesses and then it'll, as it wears, it'll sort of wear that dirt off, um, you know, in the areas where it's either hot or it's constantly being rubbed from, you know, having the barrels changed or having the, uh, the ammunition hopper changed or, you know, think of, think of what, the item is that you're trying to portray and how it might be used and that will sort of you can use that to inform how you want to um, paint the thing so so you can see we've there's a bit of a yellowy sort of tinge to it now um yeah which i really like so what i'm going to do now oops, sorry we're uh, just having a bit of a camera stand malfunction there um what you can do is I'll get this next range out and I will use, uh, not that one, sorry, wrong one. A bit of this one. So this one's got soot. We're just gonna put a little bit of soot on the brush, just rub it into the little thingy. And I'm just gonna do a bit of that at the ends here. Again, it's hard for the camera to pick this up, um, but in photos, you'll see in photos, I'll put some photos on Instagram, I put some photos on yesterday of the other weapon arm. Um, I sort of got, now that I've got my recipe down for that that I'm happy with, I'll um, go through and I'll show you this one, I thought. So, yeah, I, this, is, this is a lot of fun doing this. And this will take, you know, I'll spend a few hours doing this gun. This gun will be a few hours work easily. Um, it's already been, it's been sprayed and then I'll just go around and do all of these little bits. I'll add the little transfers and, you know, blend them in. I'll, uh, I've got a couple of freehand ideas that I want to try out on this thing. Um, on the, the armor sections up there, I've still got to paint some of that armor. But yeah, this is where we're at so far. So where we go next is we get some of our Mecca steel, give it a shake. Bit on the wet palette there. You don't really don't need much, just a couple of drops. Uh, and this is where I will get, uh, I'm gonna use this one today, which is my Artis Opus size one. Um, I'm going to try that one for some scratching. So let's do that. So all we're doing, I've just put that a bit on the brush, the standard sort of way. That's what I'll... I like to try and keep the area as clean as I can. Um, I don't really don't like painting on a dirty surface. So uh, where's going to be a good spot to show you this? Okay, and then all I do now is see where this hinge is. Let's chuck a little bit here. And we're just going to go around and make some little highlights. And we don't want to go too nuts with this because it's easy to overdo it. Mm. 
Let me just go around on the edges. This is where the wear and the tear is happening on these edges. A bit much on that one there. Just some scratches there. You'll notice it's not a neat, clean line. Uh, I'm going to use some of these scratches that I've got already in it, um, in the resin. And I'm going to just try and chuck some highlight in underneath them there. And this is all, if you want to get a nice straight line, it's always easier to do it um, vertically. So top to bottom like I'm doing now. I've turned it around to uh, to do that. And there you go. So we've put a little bit of, uh, we've used those scratches to our advantage and they're helping us to sell this illusion of a piece of actual real metal that exists in the, you know, in the setting that we're trying to portray. So it's very, it's very shiny, very metallic. Yeah, so, I mean, that's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory. Again, it, it takes practice. Um, and once you sort of you find out what works for you, you'll, you'll go a lot faster. Um, So where this, see this is too big, what we can do, I've got a little bit of black on my palette here, maybe I just chuck a bit of that in there, like that. Blend it in a little. more black in the deepest bit there we go all right let's continue with the weathering of these metal surfaces obviously we're not going to do the gold at the moment uh, this is this will be finished at a later date so We've added every all the little some little scratches here and there. I will go and add more, but for the purposes of this, let's call that done. Next thing we're going to use are these um, oil brushes from MIG. Um, we're going to use a tiny bit of this ochre colour, um, which is sort of rust, but I'm only going to use it on this um, ammunition hopper, which I figure would be more of at least the door and the certain areas of it would be more of a disposable item or something that's regularly reused. A little bit of green, um, just to add a bit of interest, uh, and a little bit of buff. It's white, essentially. Um, so you're just going to use that. Uh, and then we're going to have a um, crappy old brush, cheap crappy old brush and some of my uh, odorless solvent, which we just put in a little container here. Um, yeah. All right, so all we wanna do, always start with the white, um, it's just easier. So I usually, the, the needles do get a bit, they're not very fine after a little while. So um, I usually just open it, get a little dot, on a couple of dots on the end there and uh, just you don't really need heaps sort of try to add them randomly around and this will really just sort of simulate um, uh, like rain or dirt or environmental weathering it's not um, you know it's not chips and scratches and things it's just purely environmental weathering just put a little bit of um, the stuff on your brush 
and you need to sort of experiment with it, but when this uh, dries, the what you will end up with is this. You can see that a bit better there. So I, I would normally I would normally do this stage after I've put decals on. Um, I'm not going to add decals on this back side. This is the side that you won't actually see this when it's on the Titan. You can't actually see this panel at all. Um, so I'm not going to bother adding de decals there. Um, it, yeah, it's, it's pointless. You, you can't literally can't see any of this. So yeah, you just sort of build it up like this. Um, and this is a nice final stage. Uh, it just creates that, yeah, it's that next, that next level of, um, believability. So, yeah, that's where we're at. So I've added two streaks there that are pretty chunky. Let's get a little bit of stuff on. And again, this is just takes practice. Um, It's not, yeah, but it's not hard to do. And you you can see that it's pretty bright. I could probably knock this back a little bit just by doing that. Okay, let's do a little bit of green. I mean, it's the same process, but you can see this one's um, closer to where you start out with them. So we can still use this one. Um, Again, you only just want a little, couple of little dabs. Um, and it's just a hint. It's not a thick line of color. It's just a hint, a suggestion of color. And it could be that some of the paint, the green paints run or that there's like, you know, there's, there's, oh, it just, it just brings out, I think it just brings out the metal a lot nicer. And obviously you're trying to um, head make these head down in um, you know as close to vertical as you can get otherwise they look a bit weird if they're sort of um, uh, you know making squiggly lines Okay, so that's a little hint of green. Let's have a little hint more. It's like a, it's a filter, I guess this is what they call it. Um, just sort of see that little hint of green there. And we just, yeah, we just make, that's what metal that's been sitting outside for a while will look like. Now with this one, you have to be a little bit more careful. You don't want too much, maybe just one, we'll go with one slot. On the other side, it's at the forward end of this um, box. So I think I'll go with the forward end here too. So we'll just add a little dot of the um, thinner or the solvent in there. And we'll just come down there. So you can see that a bit better. And we'll just go one little line like that. And that's probably, so we'll add a little bit more. Just a tad more. Let's do that like this. Uh, you can see there's a little bit there, but we'll go with just a tad more, I think, here. Again, yeah, I really, I'm always very careful with this one because um, yeah, it can be very overpowering because it's such a um, strong contrasting color. And also um, the yeah, the, this stuff isn't really going to get a chance to rust. 
um, that's what I think anyway, that they're going to be very careful with these, um, these, part, these pieces of, well, they're equipment, but they're also worshipped as gods, so they're going to, um, you know, look after this stuff quite a lot. Uh, yeah, and we've just got a nice little rust mark there. Little filter, a rust filter. It's a red filter. You see that? There we go. So, when it all dries up, that's what you end up with. So you can see the, um, the weathering's done on this side. I've done the the painted surface is the same. Um, and that's where you will end up with the silver. So just to show you again, it is a base coat of gunmetal gray, or dark gray, dark, um, you know, a dark metallic color. Don't wash it with the normal, your normal um, null oil. Wash it with a mix of the metal slag and the, um, the pigment fixative, uh, the isopropyl alcohol, and then rub some of that off and use your Tamiya Weathering Master powder type things. Very important again is the brush. So the brush is a cut makeup brush. It gives it that stiffness here that you need. Um, yeah, and then you go through and just add your little chips and scratches. You can use Rune Fang Steel. You can use um, the color that I showed you, which is that Mecca Silver color. Uh, also, I've also used recently this Chrome Silver from Tamiya. This is this is a really good one. Um, it's it's a funny sort of acrylic paint though. It's it's got a smell to it, um, and it's not non toxic like. Um, like the GW paint, so just beware, don't lick that. this, it's flammable, it's a flammable acrylic paint um, with vapour, so there you go. Uh, yeah, so that's where you will end up, you will end up with something like that, with your metal. Righto, if there's any questions, let me know.